Shure is one of the most experienced wireless microphone companies in the world. A lot of you don't know that. In the indie film world, we don't know that because a lot of their products don't really fit our needs, at least up until today. But they have a lot of experience with wireless. In fact, their Axient digital system is considered one of the finest, most robust wireless microphone systems in the industry today. Now, if you just want a lot of features and specs and packed into some package at the lowest price possible, this is probably not the system for you. But if you want a system that is a solid entry-level pro system that is really well thought out, then the SLXD is worth considering. And just recently, they released a portable receiver that fits on a camera and can feed the audio directly into your camera. That's why a big part of the reason why they've not been super popular with indie filmmakers up until this point. So let's take a look at this. There's a couple of things here. There's an SLX-D5, which is a portable receiver that mounts on your camera or in a sound bag. And there is also a new SLX-D3, which is a plug-on transmitter for XLR microphones. And in fact, this entire uh, episode here is being recorded with this Sennheiser MKH-50 boom just out of the frame here with the SLX-D3 plug-on transmitter. That's what you're hearing. We'll also play back some samples that include their SLX-D1 body pack transmitter along with the Uniplex lavalier microphone. So let's roll those samples. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Let's talk through the pros and cons. I've taken the entire summary in written form and put it at the end of the video. If you want to go straight to that because you don't want to hear me talk, it's fine. You can find that at the very end. You can find it in the index in the description, or you can scrub along the timeline and you'll see it in the index there. Here are the pros. First of all, it's a great camera or sound bag mountable UHF system. It's a digital wireless microphone system with digital predictive diversity. And I think the digital predictive diversity is actually an antenna diversity. Not 100% sure, and they weren't really clear on that. But in short, what that means is if the signal is not being picked up by one of the antennas, the system will automatically switch over to the other. So that gives you a little bit more reliability and prevents dropouts. The system features up to 118 decibels of dynamic range, and it is transmitting 24-bit digital audio. And as it turns out, the latency is extra low. Now, whenever you have a digital system, there's going to be some latency, some time from when you first talk into the microphone until the audio comes out the other end of the receiver into your camera or recorder. In the case of the SLXD system, that's 3.2 milliseconds according to their specs. And then in our tests where we recorded me clapping on camera, it came out at exactly 3.2 milliseconds. So our tests line up exactly with what Shore said. In short, that is very good performance. It is not something that creates any sort of problems really. So good job, Shore. Now the new receiver and the new plug-on transmitter are just part of a wider ecosystem of different pieces and bits that go along with this entire system. There are body pack transmitters. There are battery chargers. You can buy proprietary lithium ion rechargeable batteries. There are little docks that you can put a whole bunch of transmitters in to have them charging at the same time if you're using one of their lithium ion batteries. It's just a really, really, oh, there are rack mount receivers, dual channel receivers, single channel receivers that are half rack. There's just a whole bunch of different items here. And that's one of the reasons why, again, this hasn't been used in indie filmmaking a whole lot because they didn't have a camera mountable receiver, and now they do. Now, one note for the SLX-D5, which is we're using as our receiver right now, it is a single channel receiver. Now, for some people, that's going to be a big disappointment because a lot of the newer systems that are coming out have dual channel receivers where you can actually transmit from two separate transmitters, two separate microphones to a single receiver. This is only a single channel receiver. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. In terms of transmission distance, when we went outdoors with nothing nearby out in the wild, <laughs> the mountains of Utah, we got our first dropout at 50 meters when the pack was not in line of sight. When it was in line of sight, we got to around 70 meters, but when it's out of line of sight, which is, for example, placing it on your back on the, on the belt, 
when you're facing the camera, we got 50 meters, which is excellent. Compared to a lot of the other digital systems that we've used so far, that's actually one of the better ones. So that works really well. Indoor distance in my home here, we went through the entire home and had a zero dropouts throughout the entire house. So I put it down here in the basement, walked out the door, closed the door, upstairs <clears throat> to the opposite end of the house, closed another door, no dropouts whatsoever. So it does really, really well. This is the beauty of a UHF system. And this is not what you're going to get necessarily with a lot of the 2.4 gigahertz consumer systems. In a lot of cases, those will be okay if you're just using two channels, but a system like this, you can run easily 32 channels, uh, Not depends on where you're at. <laughs> you could run a lot more channels with a UHF system and not experience dropouts. With the 2.4 gigahertz systems, this is gonna be the Rode Wireless Goes, Wireless Pros, the DJI mic, things like that. I've had so many people email me and say, Curtis, I have four channels of insert consumer wireless microphone system here, and I keep getting dropouts, what can I do? And the answer is probably upgrade to a UHF system. <laughs> And that's what this is. So that's uh, something to keep in mind there. The nice thing about this is this receiver can output a true line level output, which is really, really nice, or it can output mic level if you are feeding it into a consumer camera that only has a microphone input. So that's really nice. So in our case here, the output is going into our sound devices mix pre three at line level. So we're not having to kind of boost the level and then reboost it again once we get to the recorder. It's already at line level and we don't have to go through that again. Now, if you are running a lot of channels of wireless, then one thing that's really great about this system is that it is compatible with the Shure Wireless Workbench application. So there's some additional hardware you have to buy there, but again, if you're doing something with say 10, 12, 15, 18 channels of wireless, doing frequency coordination becomes a pretty big job at that point, and Wireless Workbench makes it so much easier. So if you don't know a lot about wireless, there is, for example, something called intermodulation. As soon as you have more than three channels, three channels or more of wireless microphones operating in a, a, a piece of spectrum, a part of the spectrum, then you get intermodulation. That, that it's creating these kind of phantom spikes of RF energy. And so placing the different frequencies becomes a lot more work. So you don't, not only do you not want them colliding with each other, but you also have to manage this intermodulation and wireless workbench makes that dead simple. The receiver is fully metal, as is the new plug-on transmitter. Really, really fantastic build quality. The body pack transmitter is, I think, mostly a hard plastic, if I'm not mistaken. Not 100% sure. I think it is a hard plastic, um, but it's, it's done really well. The construction is really, really good. Battery powering time with the receiver, which uses two AA batteries or a proprietary lithium ion rechargeable battery, which you can buy from Shure. In our case, with the, with the alkaline batteries, the disposables, it came in at five hours and 21 minutes of power time. If you use the nickel metal hydride rechargeables, you get longer than that. If you use the lithium ion, you'll get even longer than that. So 521 is a worst case scenario. We did find on the body pack transmitter that we got 10 hours and 47 minutes of power time with nickel metal hydride batteries. We were using the IKEA Lada batteries in that particular case. That is fantastic. So you can get through a lot of a lot of productions in 10 hours and 47 minutes. You can also power the receiver and the plug-on transmitter via USB-C inputs. So if you need to do that, that's an option as well. Very nice. You can run up to 32 channels per frequency band. And you can, like I said, again, this is a system where if you're running a lot more channels, if you're running more than two, this is a kind of system that you wanna to start to look into instead of the 2.4 gigahertz systems. It also has a multi-mic mode. So what that is, is it allows you to scan for multiple receivers at the same time from a single receiver. And then you can use the infrared sync function to set those other receivers up and then also set the transmitters up. So if you are running multiple microphones at the same time and you're not using wireless workbench, for example, you still have this mode that'll help you coordinate those frequencies. We did our practical noise floor sample. And what we found here is that the system is actually very, very quiet, the wireless system itself. So with the plug-on transmitter and a Sennheiser MKH-50, I went into this space here, turned off all the lights, no other noise generating things in the room. We recorded some dialogue and then also some silence. We normalized the entire thing to minus 23 LUFS, sort of a standard loudness level, and then measured that silent portion. And we found that the noise floor sat at minus 68 dB RMS max. That's very good for a wireless system. 
It's important to note that that is largely a measure of the self noise generated by the microphone. So if you are using the lavalier microphone with the body pack transmitter, it wasn't so quiet. And we'll talk about that in just a minute here. The system comes with a limited two year warranty and you can buy it in a whole different variety of configurations. So here, for example, the kit with the receiver, the portable receiver and a transmitter comes in at $599 US. Mind you, that's without a microphone. If you want to get it with the Uniplex lavalier microphone, which is what you heard in our samples earlier on, that comes in at $899 with the transmitter, the receiver, and the microphone. Incidentally, that is a cardioid microphone, which is pretty rare for lavaliers, but that's also going to be helpful on stage where you're doing live sound as well to help reject the pickup of the PA system so that you're not getting feedback as much. So that's a pretty nice feature there. You can get a 729 USD kit, which includes the receiver and the plug-on transmitter. So if you need a wireless boom microphone or a wireless handheld microphone, it's a great option there. Now, no system is perfect. What are the cons here? A few things. Number one, there are no SMA connectors on the receiver or the transmitter, so you can't swap out the antennae and you cannot use external antennae for the receiver. So just something to keep in mind on the portable receiver. On the rack mount receivers, you actually can connect external uh, antennae. So that's a, that's a nice option there. As I mentioned before, the UL4 or the Uniplex lavalier microphone is not the cleanest lavalier microphone I've used. When we did that same practical noise floor sample, it came in at minus 58 dB RMS max, which is, you can definitely hear it. Um, so it's not the m cleanest microphone in the world. There are other options you could use here. You could use a Twinplex microphone if you want to use a nice professional grade microphone as well. There is no wideband option for the receiver, so you do have to buy the kit for specific frequency bands, depending on where you're operating the kit in the world and localities. Um, unfortunately, unlike some of the other newer wireless systems out there, it doesn't have a wideband receiver that can actually get reception across a very, very wide slice of ultra high frequencies. And so that's just one thing to keep in mind. It's not a big problem. Go to one of the authorized dealers like b &H Photo, Gotham Sound, True Audio, they'll be able to help talk you through and figure out what works best for your location. There's also no limiter in the transmitters, which was a little disappointing, but there is plenty of headroom, so not necessarily a problem if you have a nice clean microphone. Now, a few notes, just not, not so much cons, but some things to know about, which are kind of unique about this system. Number one, the max power output in the US uh, version of this is 10 milliwatts, and the low setting is one milliwatt. Now that sounds like an extraordinarily low signal, low strength signal, but the reality is it held up really, really well. And when you're using lower output settings like that, like a one milliwatt, it, it is a lot easier on the battery. So you get really, really good long battery powering time. So that's actually a really good thing from that standpoint. The, as I mentioned before, the receiver, the portable receiver, the SLX D5 is not a dual channel receiver and the receiver does not have a digital output. So it's only analog output. So if you're looking for something with a digital output, you probably want to look at their next level system, something like the ULX. So here's the question, where does the SLXD wireless microphone system make sense? It's, it makes sense if you want something that is very thoughtfully designed by a company that has a lot of experience with wireless microphone systems. Reliability is top notch. Durability is top notch. Sound quality on a digital system, that's the beauty of digital wireless microphone systems. They can sound so much better, much cleaner, wider dynamic range. When you are running a lot of channels in a studio or a venue or maybe a house of worship, this is a kind of system that's a good choice to look at. When you need a rich ecosystem that has lots of different options for the different types of transmitters, um, different types of receivers, this is a good consideration here. And I would really call this a great entry level pro system for sound bags or venues or house of worship. So where does a system like this not make sense? When you need two channels directly into a consumer camera that has a single 3.5 millimeter microphone input, this is probably not the best choice. So if that's you, probably better to look at other options. And if you are a, a spec or feature list shopper, <laughs> You may not find this system that appealing, but what I think it, the nuance here that's important to consider is that this system is really, really well thought out. It has a, a, a full ecosystem around it. It has a lot of years of experience of design built into it, and it's reliable and it's robust. Now, let's compare it to a couple of other systems out there. 
First of all, the Sennheiser EWDP, which is Sennheiser's new kind of prosumer digital wireless microphone system. I would say that the SLXD did better in terms of transmission distance outdoors, without question. The EWDP did not do that well. Shure has a wireless workbench, so if you're going to be running a lot of channels of audio, of wireless audio, it has that built-in integration, which is really nice. However, I will say that the EWDP is a little easier to expand to a dual channel system if you're going into a camera with a single 3.5 millimeter microphone input. It has the stacking receivers. So you can put two receivers, one on top of the other to expand it. So that's where the EWDP has a little bit of an advantage. Now, what about the Deity Theos system? Sure has far more experience making wireless microphone systems. And I have a lot of respect for Deity. They've come a long way in just a short period of time, um, but they don't have nearly as much field testing hours on their wireless microphone systems as Shure does on theirs. And so you're getting a more mature system here that's actually been out in production since 2020. And um, they're just adding some new, some new features now and has a much richer ecosystem of plug-on transmitters and so on and so forth. Now, on the other hand, the Theos has a lot more features that this system does not have, including a dual channel receiver, recording in the transmitter, 32-bit float recording in the, in the transmitter, wide band reception, so you don't have to buy a different receiver for different uh, parts of the world. It also has a limiter in the transmitter on the Deity Theos, whereas the SLXD does not. So those are some things to kind of consider between the Deity Theos and the SLXD from Shure. Now, what about versus the Sony UWPD? Well, the Sony is not a digital system, first of all, so there are potentially some limitations there. But it, overall, I think it still sounds pretty good, the Sony system. Sony has a proprietary shoe connection for some of the Sony cameras. So if you want to go directly into a camera, you're going to always have the receiver on a camera. That's where the Sony may be a better choice. And of course, as I mentioned before, Shure has the wireless workbench for large channel counts, where the Sony really doesn't have anything that's anywhere close to that. So. I get the sense that the Sony system is really more for camera operators uh, that are going to run maybe two channels of audio is generally the, the impression I get there. So hopefully all that was helpful for you and gives you some perspective on where a wireless system like this fits in. Get out there, make some great sound, and we will talk to you again soon.